computer. Just be careful who you share it with. <laughs> yeah, the regenerative tourism paradox. I like it. Well, it, 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 it. Those two words together in the mindset of most people about what tourism is and can be are a paradox to some extent, no? If you think about it from a mechanical worldview. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I mean if, from that mindset. Yeah. But 99.9% .9 of them do think in a mechanical worldview. So therein lies our problem. I mean, um, the 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 biggest challenge I'm seeing is that <clears throat> there's all these people trotting out, you know, these papers, these consultant papers, and there's one here. How can tourism be regenerative? By one of the biggest tourism consultants. Who's that? Uh, Solimar. They're American. Um, oh, yeah, yeah oh, out yeah. of Washington, and they have got all the right, you know, three diagrams. You know, circular. Oh, that must be, must be true then. <laughs> multicolored, another tick. <laughs> it's a circle, it's multicolored, it must be. It's a framework, that's another one. Um, and uh, yeah, it talks, you know, it's it's got various elements, of course. Uh, community center needs first, biodiversity, govern in a transparent and just manner. But yeah, none of them. And this is true of that. All the top consultants, they won't deal with the, with the essence of the problem, which is changing your mind, changing your. Well, I, I since since you're sort of right in the middle of it, and you have to actually engage with all these people who are now somewhat jumping on on the craze of regenerative tourism, using the word left, right, and center, like the president of the Balearic Islands has publicly announced that the Balearics have to lead in regenerative tourism. And I yeah. really don't think she could talk for more than half an hour about what sustainable tourism might look like, but she has certainly no clue what um, how regenerative is different from just a little more renewable energy and a little less carbon emissions and maybe a little more buying local products. But from, from your experience being so in the middle of this work, what percentage of this conversation is truly about the question, how can we reinvent tourism so tourism becomes an engine of regeneration in the regions it takes place in? Well, and how much, how much is a conversation about, oh, what can this regenerative mean do for my tourism business? And well, how can I stay ahead of the curve by slapping the word regenerative in front of everything I do? <laughs> Well, you know, my, whether whether we call it tourism or anything, there's certainly almost a massive abuse of the term. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we have to actually define what, what's trying to be accomplished with regeneration to then decide whether tourism can, in fact, fulfill that. And I mean, I think that would be a useful beginning to level set. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, increasingly, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling we have to go back to really first principles. And, you know, if so many people are using bits and pieces. And they love the idea that tourism might do some good and all the rest of it. But the idea that they might actually have to fundamentally rethink the entire model <laughs> of how we live on well, the planet Earth. And, right. And, and how they may have to work change themselves mm. um you know this is i'm beginning to sound a bit like a broken record because i keep, keep talking about we don't if we don't do that well we're not going to get anywhere but there isn't a market for that right now but since, very uncomfortable. i mean let, let me try this on both of you because we, we, we all care about this um and we all have slightly different kind of theories of change or practices of how we work with with this um and let me just try to in a nutshell summarize where, where I'm at with how living on an island where tourism is unavoidable, like I live on Mallorca, 60% um, of the economy is direct tourism, but if you add all that links somehow to tourism, you could say that 80% of the local economy is driven by tourism. Mm. And therefore, at some point in my intention to move to an island because it would give me a bioregional context for long-term transformation towards a more thriving 
bioregional way of doing things, mm. um, which was my initial motivation of moving here, I, I began to realize that tourism had to be, in this particular case, the engine of change because it's so dominant that you couldn't change the system without changing tourism. And in many ways, that's the case with most paradises around the world where tourism has just jumped in and, and, and catapulted people from being relatively untouched by neoliberal globalization to being right at the center of it through bringing lots of people there. And, and so this, this notion that the only way we can heal tourism is through, at a place like Mallorca, creating a different model where we show that a radically reduced and numbers more qualitative tourism that finances the bioregional regeneration process, local food economy, local water treatment capacity, local renewable energy, decentralized community cooperatively owned structures, all of that could be built within a relatively short period of time if large tourism businesses invested in the regions where their businesses are. And, and for me, of course, there is, that's all still too strategy, still too solutioneering. It's yeah, not- that's a, that's, a mechanical, that's a mechanical solution, what you're suggesting there. Yeah, yeah. But, but precisely that narrative is the narrative that is complex enough, but picks them up in enough places that you can start a conversation. And then when they kind of keep using regenerative and you say, well, this is not about solutioneering, they actually begin to, well, he seemed to make sense up until now, and now he says it's not about solutioneering, but we need yeah. solutions. And, and but, 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 but you've already got buy-in and it's- I, like, oh, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I say that, I just say that just to make a, an oppositional point, but I agree with <laughs> you the, that the, um, and I don't wanna, can I, take this back a little bit in terms of the term regeneration I, I i complain into my you know into my cry into my beer about the banalization of the term and yet when people invite me to do regeneration even they don't have a, a clue and they never do by the way no one ever does heck i barely do so um, yeah that's that's, that's also <laughs> yeah and you have better understanding than I do, but I think we're still all learning. And, and oh, sure we are. And and the, the fact is, is that we, we are working with emergence, right? So it's a whole different it's a whole different way of, of working. As long as people are willing to collaboratively learn and not demand an answer, and um, that's the that's, first big threshold we have to get over. That are, that's the right. Willingness to learn. That's right. And so That's in our in my, for our proposals, basically, I put intentional tripping hazards there saying, you know, you're going to probably fire us in a month or if you if you don't, you know, because we're actually going to destabilize you and here's what we're going to do. And this requires this. And we try to at least wait, even though they won't understand anything when they do start thinking, oh, what is this about? We can say, remember, we told you that this is what we're talking about. This is different. This is different thinking. So I, what I'm saying is that I don't think we've ever had a project that, even though they might have used the word regenerative, that actually understood what it was. So no matter what we're working on, we have an opportunity. The door is open. We have an opportunity to uh, to invite transformation. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my position increasingly is that if we can focus, um, let's say, on the place, on Mallorca, and talk about and get the conversation not about tourism. It just so happens that an awful lot of the economic engine in Mallorca is currently tourism. But what they're really looking at is, is, is creating uh, a long-term sustainable society economy on an island in the context in which we're operating today. But we're talking about its revitalization, mm -hmm. aren't we? So I, I would, I think we'll have more success if we don't fall back into these silos of its tourism or it's something else. If, if we can if we can find a mechanism or a method or an approach that says we're 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 here to help you revitalize and create a vibrant, flourishing, resilient future, that's what you really all want. Or get them to the point where they say, what do you really want? It's not about do I want more tourism or less tourism or more more this, more that. They want to have a flourishing future. And and 
stop thinking about it because that forces people into their silos and it forces people back into their repetitive ways of thinking. Well, I, I, keep wondering, I, I keep wondering whether we need more than one strategy, more than one well, narrative. We need several probably, but that's just yeah. one I was proposing. No, I mean, I mean, no, I mean in, in terms of like the, today I was reflecting with Alice about what to do with regard to the potential here on Mallorca building on bringing a lot more people together. But then she said something very wisely because she's also lived here for 12 years. She said, this is not a culture for large alliance building. Um, they don't work like that. Um, they, they get fearful of people trying to subsume individual initiatives into a larger strategic plan. And, and I, th I thought about it and, and she's absolutely right. And, and so what I've realized that what I'm doing is, is somehow picking people up where they're at. And if it's a story about cooperatives and local farming with one group of people, and it's a story about diversifying the local economy to make it more resilient towards shocks like COVID or coming climate change disruptions, um, then that's a, a start of a conversation. Or if it is about regenerative tourism, it's, it would be another. And, Ultimately, because the underlying narrative is about revitalization with place. In my case, I use region because it makes sense with Mallorca, but, but basically the, the, the fractal place from local community to bioregion to planet. Um, in order to, and I learned this from you, Bill, or I, I, I learned a new way of framing it that is so much more specific that like well, well since we had this conversation two years ago it, it really worked in me when you said to me um you can't save the planet you can only save places mm. and and what's since then become really crisp clear in my understanding is that the only way we can handle the complexity of the modern world is if we go out of the abstract into the specific, into the phenomenon, into what's right in front of us. If we, yeah, yeah I know that I'm, I'm telling, I'm preaching to the converted with you. I'm, I'm just like- Yeah, no, I, I just want to, I just want to underline it. That's, yeah. that also is incredibly, this is why people don't understand the proposals we write. They don't, they're, yeah. they're kind of surprised until they are experiencing and, and it's a continual process of emergence, right? They're actually, oh, I never thought about it that way before. Now I'm seeing this, now I'm seeing this. Oh, you mean I have to actually change? Whoa, well, and so the, um, uh, the opportunity with any regenerative project is to um, allow that emergence to happen, but op opening the door in such a way that they're mm -hmm. motivated to take that next mm -hmm. step. I may, I may have kind of just diverted that conversation. I no, I don't think so, because uh, what I heard um, Daniel saying is it's, you know, we're not talking about solutioneering, but we are talking about meeting people where they're at. <laughs> yeah. In other words, the door will open if they think that we're relevant to where they're at, but we can then, try, you know, we have to get invited in. Oh, can, I, can I riff on that? Yeah. Because. Um, not too boldly, because I only just sort of came out with it. <laughs> Well, no, it's just so what, when let's get rid of all the terminology, all the thought processes. And mm -hmm. ultimately, if, if we do not leave, we do not leave with individuals inspired to do what that which they love to do, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want it, Daniel? Yeah, because. I actually think that I've put three pieces that you speak about a lot in, in Regenesis language together that they suddenly click to me in the sense that this going into the specific, going into the phenomenon, it's, it's working from potential rather than working from problems. Okay. And the, the funny thing is in order for people to make it, because I, what I try to do is I experienced a certain crypticness of some of that language that for me was difficult to overcome. So I'm trying to find a language that makes sense to me because that might also make to, uh, sense to other people. Yeah. Of how these really important pieces that you've put together and Carol put together before you um, actually can be translated into uh, towards more people. 
And, and one of the things there is that if we go into the specifics of place and then we look at all of the complexity, because we now, now it's not the whole world we're trying to say, we're looking at the place, and suddenly you can do an Aikido with problems because people are so trained through education to do problem solving. Designers are, see themselves as problem solvers. If you tell people problems aren't important, solutions aren't important, they, they, you, you, you critique them at their essence as they understand themselves at the moment. And so they, they bring up all the blocks. But if you do an Aikido with them and say, the minute we look through the lens of place, the lens of the region, the specificity, then we can map all the problems. And suddenly, when we look at them all together, there's a sort of Kuhnian Gestalt switch happening. It goes plop, and all those problems integrated become potential. Because we're not looking at abstracts, we're not trying to define an abstract problem ever further and then find an abstract solution and then implement it everywhere. We're actually looking at the potential that comes through looking deeper into the problems of a place, but through them finding, and, and it's, it's, it's basically, it just helps people to ease around what you're inviting them into when you're inviting them into potential thinking. Yeah, and we aren't that, we aren't that rigorous in the field because we're iterating. You're always iterating between problems and potential. You can't get, you can't ignore it. It's on their mind, right? All you can say, just park that for a moment. Let's look at what we're aiming at. And then I like mm -hmm. what um, Russell Acop says, problems dissolve mm -hmm. when you're working that way. And, and you know, I, I, Ian McGilchrist had a great lecture on, um, Anyway, it was a great video, but basically he was going- All of his lectures are great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, on, um, on just that issue, it's you know right brain, left brain, but problems, potential, um, whole is, holes versus fragments. And of course, you, you, you can't have a discussion without both of them. Mm -hmm. the, problem, the problem is, is that we don't often have the discussion of the whole. And so that's, that, maybe overcompensation, I would call it on our part, is probably why it probably is a little overcompensating, but it, it, is, it is iterative between both. It, everything's happening in the corpus colossum, if you will. The, the wholeness thing is really, really complex because that's where, you, where if you really take it deep into the, the kind of, again, the, the phenomenological wholeness, the coming into being of the world through participation. It, so it, it's not, the additive whole of let's just get all aspects of a regenerative tourism system right and put them all together and then we have a perfect regenerative tour tourism idea. Yeah? It's really understanding that there's a consciousness dimension in how the whole shows up and, and therefore at the center is this inner and collective working of revisioning because then you can actually unleash potential, otherwise you can't. Mm. You? But I don't think there's such a thing as a regenerative tourism system. I think there might be a regenerative system, a system that's self-organizing and regenerating. Right, and tourism With, happens to be an engine. Tourism right? is a contributor in the same way that you could have, uh, you, you know, if COVID went on forever and nobody could travel to Mallorca, it would readjust in some way, shape or form. There might be a lot of initial suffering, um, uh, but we've seen in other island cultures, particularly in the Pacific, where they've all actually flourished when tourism stopped. <laughs> so they rediscovered things they'd forgotten. So I, I just, the less we use the word tourism, the happier I become, because it's so... Um, we've built this whopping great big quote industry around something that isn't an industry we've built all these these particular ways of looking at things that really really um prevent us from communicating so i think mallorca is a living system a living ecosystem tourism is a part it's a very important part but you and i really like what you said about focusing on where people are at i mean in mexico for example what turned me on was the fact that <clears throat> The problem is one of rural development. It's, it's, it's land that's degraded, land that needs to be brought back to life. And then the role was people got excited about that, the relationship with food and nutrition and farming and all the rest of it. And then they could see where hospitality could fit in. 
and make a contribution, but it wasn't starting off by saying, how does tourism uh, <clears throat> repair all the ills of, of rural Mexico? Yeah, could you repeat what Daniel just said again, what, what that you liked, Anna? Well, I like the fact that you were saying that we, we start with the, the specifics of a place and we, we, we work with people where they're at. Is, is that, is that Right, and that, and that speaks, I mean, that's what we characterize, again, maybe jargony, but essence to essence or intrinsic nature to intrinsic nature. If we're honoring each individual for what they are motivated to provide, and I, oh, I wanted to finish that thought, is that by getting, by actually getting people together in a practice, and we, in, in our experience, it takes about a year before they start saying, and maybe this would work in the Mallorca, Daniel, because a lot of people are very leery about working together. They're just in well, the silos. Yeah. What's that, Anna? No, that's exactly what Daniel was saying. The people in Mallorca and a lot of people are just not well, used to this idea of collaboration either, right? But once they get to know each other in kind of a safe spot where they're actually also being effective, effective meetings, most people don't know how to run meetings. So we basically, we're basically, we're, we're actually educating people how to run effective meetings. That's all. And mm -hmm. but then they're doing the work by just being in each other's presence and getting to know each other. And then somebody says, wait a minute, I didn't know you were working on that. We're kind of working on that, too. And maybe we should talk a little bit. And then it begins to. And then emergence the can take place. That's right. it, it, I mean, this, this is the, the bit that like designing for positive emergence like because the first thing you have to understand that, that when you try to design for emergence is you can't predict and control complex dynamic systems so you okay. can't know what's going to come up like you, you can only basically roughly <clears throat> aim to set the conditions that the type of emergence is a positive one and not a completely degenerative horrible nightmare that that, that you then have to fix immediately and that's, and that's where potential serves this is the north star what's the potential yeah. of the system and I, I i think i may have shared this with both of you but you know one of my clients the ceo of a major corporation kept saying to me bill you're not in charge why are you not why aren't you controlling this meeting <laughs> i heard you say that before yeah and let me let me share you something with you because it's sometimes it's funny um, how like I've recently had an experience of I'm working with with a young professor from a number of design schools in Europe but he's mainly at ETH Zurich um, he's at the systems design lab there his name is Tobias Lute and but he's also a mountaineering guide and, and a skiing instructor and he's very kind of oh, yes, I looked him up. yeah and um, he invited me to help him design a mass massive open online course, which is going live next week um, on um, designing resilient and regenerative systems is what, what they decided to call it. And um, I'll, I'll not talk about the MOOC because I, I could spend ages talking about it, but um, as part of this MOOC, there, there's a the different real world labs. One of them is the Monviso Institute, which Tobias has set up in the mountains of um, Northern Italy, which is a wonderful project. Another one is, is somewhere in, in Norway. And the, the third one is bioregional regeneration here on Mallorca and, and kind of stories around things that are already shifting Mallorca towards more vit vitality again. And um, Tobias then came and said, ah, oh, by the way, I have this amazing regenerative tourism pilot that I've already run twice. And why don't we do one on Mallorca and you don't do one with us? And then he presented this idea to me. And it's really quite like if you're saying, what could a regenerative tourism offer look like? Um, I think he's done a pretty damn good job. Um, so basically what we're going to do, we've tweaked it a little bit in October, <laughs> either last week of October or first week of November this year, is <clears throat> somewhere between 16 and 20 people will come to join three guides here on Mallorca who will all get on our bicycles and will spend six days cycling, physically cycling, with very little luggage, no kind of uh, van behind us traveling with, with lots of stuff. Yeah? So it's, it's pre-selected who, who will say yes to this, of course. Um, <laughs> and and the, the audience is primarily the, 
a very small 0. Point whatever percent of the 10,000 people that normally do um, MOOCs when the ETH offers MOOCs. And um, they're basically design students, masters, PhD level, they're de professional designers, they're professional teachers in, in, in design, the sustainability and, and um, circular economy and supply chain type consultants. And these folks get to cycle six days and each morning they see one story, then they go have lunch, which is another story, a kilometer zero local food um, business. And then in the afternoon, they, they see a third story. And then in the evening, they spend another hour, hour and a half together in a very playful designery way, doing doodles, doing maps, doing some systems mapping on a software that one of the, the professors that, that is one of the three guides has, has developed. And they give like so, so when they arrive at the story, which can be either local businesses that actually produce something, they can be agricultural business, they can be NGOs, they can be foundations, but everybody working somehow here on Mallorca on, on an aspect of the, the, the greater puzzle. And um, they basically get a short, they're only there for about two and a half hours. They're, they're there and they're, they're, they already arrive in a much more warm way because they're not coming in their suits and ties with a, um, as, as this, the consultants or the, the academics getting off a minibus visiting this business. They're actually arriving with their bicycles and they're all sweaty and they have a quick drink. And then, so it, it's, it's just much more human, the in, in, in encounter. Mm. And then, the person basically shows them around for about 45 minutes, maybe gives them an opportunity to do something hands-on briefly. And then you just sit down and there's a round of, of questions where the, the visitors can just ask questions about the business and take notes. And it's a really humble approach to the business owners of saying, well, we leave you a little bit for our visit and your time, but maybe we'll, well, might, might be, of course, you know your business and you know your region, but we'll also feed you back a sort of thinking tool and a set of questions that come out of the discussions in the evening at the end of the day. And then once they've visited these 18 stories over six days, on the last day, they do a short presentation of what they learned there in a, in a kind of one slide, three people having a fun, just two minutes per story at an event where there's another kind of tasting of local food and where all the 18 stories are invited to come in and have this little thank you and, and, and feedback. And can you see the, the, the multiple levels of weaving, of connecting, of creating space for positive emergence um, that, that is not only linking people in this field together as they cycle around Mallorca, but linking their ideas with the local people, linking the local people amongst themselves. I think it's a, it's a, it's a really nice example of how, how at least you can be a catalyst of the necessary weaving that needs to happen in a region through tourism. What do you think? I think well, I, my question is, maybe I didn't hear this, but, um, how are all these different 18 stories being woven together into a whole? Are they being woven together into a whole? Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the curation that, that basically I'm, I'm, I'm doing in terms of okay. like, I, they, they're, to some extent, they're simply being woven into a whole by weaving them physically onto the map of a region that already imprints them, has a different connection with place. But, also, because you have this diverse, multifaceted view on these different stories, and you have this collective sense-making process every day, you, you're actually beginning to make it like, like you're unveiling stuff that, like, of course, I will give it a little shape when I choose which 18, because I've already got a list of 40 and don't know which 18 to choose, but um, they're really interesting and amazing stories. And of course, the art will be not to just pick the most interesting ones, but pick the ones that actually also fit together in an interesting way. Um, but, but in many ways, 
we're expecting to be surprised by the positive emergence that comes out of what what the actual event will generate. So is there a mechanism for that to continue and evolve? Yeah. It, it is in the sense that that this would happen, um, like it would create a website, like basically because all these apps that cyclists have, they create maps anyway of how many kilometers that we cycle and all that kind of stuff. And on that map, you can fill in lots of stuff. And, and, and because in the evening, because they're all sort of designerly folks, people were just on, on iPads and whatever they have, they will do mural boards and, and doodles and, and whatever. And all of that gets collected for that journey. But then it also, if there's another journey um, the following year, it won't be the same journey, but it will be taking reference to that and leaving an ever, ever bigger thing. The other, the other thing is, of course, that when Tobias did this in, in the Turin region, it did lead to linking between three businesses in the region that previously weren't linked. And so again, that's positive emergence that you just cannot, uh, like by that event where 18 local business owners, NGO owners and food producers end up in the same room together with some local government officials and possibly even some funders. Um, you, you just don't know what can come of that, particularly if, if um, those presentations are somewhat, because what, what's actually happening in a place like this, and this will be the same in many tourist destinations, is that you assume that the cool stories all know of each other, but they know maybe 40% of each other or 60% of each other, but if you, if you show them a really comprehensive map, they always kind of say, sort of, wow, that's on this island, and I've lived here all my life and I didn't know. Uh, so. Yeah, if I could pick up that point, that was my concern, I think. I mean, I, I, I think it's got some merit, your idea. Um, it's certainly got potential. Tobias is not my idea. <laughs> well, to, uh, what's the name? Tobias. But um, you've, still, you've still got a situation where you've got designer -y types, I'm using your language, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> on bicycles, <laughs> going around and observing, you know, the observed, and then forming an opinion and going along to another story, another observation. And, and yes, there's some weaving of the threads that bind, but the, you, there's that distinction then between those that are trying to do it, are working hard every day and milking the cows or serving the visitors, and those that are coming and observing them. But that's, that, that's, precisely, that's, that's precisely the framing. That I, I, I hear you completely. I agree 100% with you. And, and that's that where the framing is not we're not a bunch of experts that are going to perish. Yeah, no, it's an improvement on that, but it's for, still... For, for an hour and a half. We're, we're simply asking your question, and you're going to be the one to either run with it or not. It, it probably trigger an idea that isn't what you're being proposed or being asked, but it will possibly trigger something that will mm. then allow you to... And that's, that's how I would frame it with each one of those 18 people before we, we visit them. Mm. But as I say, I, your last point was my experience everywhere. I mean, we just did a similar, we weren't bike riding bikes, it was covering too much territory, but we, we covered about 2000 kilometers of Mexico, um, firstly, first in the semi-desert and then in the tropical uh, part, but uh, visiting different projects. What's fascinating is that, again, in most places, large or small, you'll find there's very limited knowledge of what actually is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, other people are doing because they all have you know their noses to the proverbial grindstone yeah and if you think about uh you know the difficulty we have just making you know keeping up with everything i mean these guys are, are under enormous pressure um so just and again if i look back at, at the real benefit of any of the work that we did in new zealand with the back to life program was because we did it region <clears throat> we uh, recruited people region by region but People within the region got to know each other and they got to know in other parts, they had the ability to hear from other parts of the country. And that in itself, it's that is creating the conditions for emergence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the more that we can do, I mean, I would love to think that maybe when you modify this program next year, that you um, that a number of the, the observed get on their bikes and come with them. So there's always a, a, a complete mishmash of the, the visitor, who in this case is the designer type, and uh, the visited. Mm -hmm. 
but anything that just gets that interaction going. Um, you know, I, I live in a tiny village here in, in Pembridge and, and, and I've always been terribly embarrassed because I talk a lot about community. But I had, I mean, this to me is a, is, is a resting place. It's a, you were it's just talking about this before you joined us, Bill and I have. <laughs> yeah, no, and no. the good news is that because of the Queen's Jubilee or all, all these villages up and down the country have, coming up with projects and, um, and they want to record all the historical buildings and all the rest of it. And I said, well, I wonder if we can turn this into something more sociable because, you know, who is this place? Who is here? Do we know? We don't. There are not, it is not a community. There's only a thousand people total, mm -hmm. but it's not a community. And there's about 10 communities in the village and they're all stick in their little circles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people simply do not know each other. And with COVID, they stayed in their houses and with cars, they stay in their cars. What is it going to take to get people out to be in a place experiencing it together. I'm beginning to think that is where the really good work will, will, will start. And that's that's what we find with, and by pure accident, by the way, hmm. uh, with real estate projects, they bring people out of the woodwork. Yeah, I bet they do. <laughs> well, and because it's a restraint being thrown into the system that they, for whatever reason, they're afraid of, right? So now there's interest in... <laughs> And all, and all I've been doing recently in our projects is saying to folks, hey, we get it that you're afraid of this real estate project. I'm working for the developer. I don't even necessarily agree or disagree with this project. That's not my job. My job is actually look at how do we actually create this place as to benefit all people, including the developer, because they need to have this place's um, quality of life, just like you want quality of life. So it's fighting this development going to add quality of life? If so, knock yourself out. But doubtful, right? We need to look at a lot, much larger picture. And 95%, 98% of the people we talk with say, yeah, hadn't thought about that. And how do we do that? And that's the, that's the beginning of cross fertilization in, in most, most communities that don't have an opportunity to do so. So the, th the theme I'm hearing just from our uh, conversation is that the essence of um, the main task ahead with regeneration is, is not get people understand it con conceptually, but to get them beginning to find it, come together. And it's, it's a community building process, you said, I think. So it's all relationships. That is it. And what are the skills and um, capabilities that we need to develop for that community building process? I mean, one, one because, because of this thing that happened to me that, um, the RSA gave me this wonderful medal on, on regenerative yes. design. And, and of course, regenerative design is another one of those words. It's like there's, there's, yes. a, there's a reason why Bill and, and, and friends have used regenerative development, despite the fact that the book says regenerative development and design, but it's really because development names the, the other. The development names the evolutionary process. It names the, the continuous transformation and learning that goes on as context changes, self changes, and, and, and community changes. They're like the, the, the three interacting levels of, of, of change. And, but I find it really interesting that um, you can get people, like, because for designers, it's really confronting to say, it's not about the design. It's not about the outcome. Forget, forget about the, the deliverable that is the house, the, 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 the can start. I interject something there, Daniel? Yeah, sure. <laughs> what I tell architects, and I basically tell them this, yeah. is your project is not the project. <laughs> the project is the system. Yeah. Your project is an outcome of that understanding. Yeah. So, I, you know, you, you give them an out, but they, first you got to go out here in order then to for the project to be informed. What, 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 what I do is, and, and again, this is, I've learned this entirely from, from Re Regenesis Group, and I, I tell people that as well, don't worry, um, is that, that I tell people that if they, um, it's not about uh, solutions, designs, outcomes are not important, but, things fundamentally change if the focus of our attention is not the designed outcome, but 
the capacity developed in everybody who got touched by from the beginning, like the moment they walk in and say, this is the brief and you go, no, it's not, let's have a conversation. Right. And to everything down the line, the whole supply chain, everybody who, because the, as Tony Fry said, designs go on designing, everybody who will be touched by that design in the future, if they are somehow touched in a way that their capability to keep evolving, to keep transforming, to keep responding to changes in context, to keep expressing their essence and their uniqueness in order to revitalize the whole, then you have a regenerative project. That's right. And that, and that goes right back to tourism. Yeah. That goes right back to tourism. Yeah. It, the tourism doesn't have, the tourism is an engine to catalyze those relationships. Mm. So. Well, it's another it's another um, uh, theater in which those relationships can play out, right? In other words, the yeah. it's, it's a state. Well, yeah. The reason why I say, say that, Anna, is that just like the real estate project. So there's a group that wants to do ecotourism or transfer their whatever they're doing, their hotel into more community oriented. Well, what does that mean? Mm. And um, th they can't impose that. That has to emerge from the community and they have to work, they really have to work on that. And the very process of working on that is, if you will, a touristic enterprise. Could be a touristic enterprise. It doesn't have to be. But, in, no. but as you say, Anna, the, unless, the, tur, unless the place is flourishing, mm -hmm. it's what's there to, what's there to tour? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it doesn't start with the tourists, though. It starts with coming yeah. together building those relationships and building that well i think i like this it goes back to the essence of what i understood from my regenerative uh, education was really it comes back to developing that capability <laughs> to be the whole to participate in the whole and that means you have to have consideration external consideration i think that's one of the expressions but you start to think about others and then you start to think about the impact of your decisions on others and the impact of their decisions on you. And you can't work that through without uh, conversation and, and exploration, co-exploration. So it all, it all seems circular, but I think what I'm worried about right now with the regenerative tourism, the way things are going, is it's becoming another method, another tick box thing. We need this, we need that, we need that. <laughs> when in actual fact, what you really need to do is stop drawing those diagrams um, and start listening to people and engaging them, giving them a sense that they too can make a difference, which is another reason why I got really interested in the whole, more the restoration side of tourism, because A, it's tangible. <laughs> People can see when a piece of land has been turned from desert to, to an orchard that's flowering or something, that it, that really inspires people because it gives them a sense like some material change can happen. Um, but there's so much work that has to be done together to get to that point that it's building that community in the process without saying, oh, we're going to build community. You, you just uh, can't restore a small desert town without that anyway. Well, I, I mm. like to image it this way that the process, because when we work in, when we go to some of these places, they're not anything to write home about. They're mm. pretty ugly. And but and every time we say, oh, I roll my eyes, and then a week later, I'm in love with the place. <laughs> and um, because if it's maybe a dis destroyed or grossly damaged ecosystem, the people's spirit is so powerful. It doesn't matter. There's something yeah. there. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and so I, I liken this. To the, it's a process of falling in love with life again. Yeah, I, love, I think that I've always felt that uh, that be, said it very beautifully. Um, yeah. And we, you know, we've lost, we've lost meaning in our culture. Uh, it used to be the church, and that's gone. That's, and to some degree, I think rightfully so, kind of just dissipated. And we don't really have any mechanism to replace it. But, but this is again like in another like I, I, I dance in far too many um, echo chambers at the same time. But in, the. the the whole, um, so I just lost my, my thread. What did, you, what did you just say? Oh, about the church, church, about the meaning. It's about meaning. meaning. Yeah. And I it's have a, a, it's an opportunity to grab. Ultimately, grab ultimately, ultimately, this process, like, because I, another meme that I'm trying to, to sort of seed out there is this um, 
reinventing education, reinventing universities, uh, the, the universities do have an opportunity to finally do what they've always talked about in the last 40 years, but never done, which is transdisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, um, knowledge transfer to society, all those things. I, you've heard them when we, you were at university and, and they're still not doing it. Uh -huh. um, the, the minute a university becomes a bioregional learning center and you actually oblige each and every discipline to spend some of their time telling the story of what their discipline uniquely has to tell about the region, the place. Then you find a new way, 21st century way of making people fall in love with their place again, because we fall in love as we see the detail. I've, I've experienced this in my body, having just taken on this custodianship in the, of this land. I've learned my trees finally. Like I, I've got a degree in biology and I was always mortally embarrassed that people would walk in the woods with me and say, what's that, what's that? And I go, I don't know, a brown, a brown bird, a tree. True confessions, that's nice and nice, Daniel. Yeah, I mean, precisely this thing we were talking about, seeing the label and not seeing the unique phenomenon. Yeah? And and so, so what I've learned is, at least now I can can see the label as I walk through the landscape, which is also opening up the landscape to, to look around a forest and suddenly see oak and ash and and know which trees belong here and don't belong here. And um, how just driving through a forest, I know whether it's a mature forest or one that will be replaced by something else in this ecosystem. It's things that I didn't know a year and a half ago. And if we ask all the disciplines to make us fall in love with place again by telling these stories, and each discipline has these little morsels, like they, they get really boring if they PhD length or, or, or paper length details about something, but they all have some amazing little facts that, that, that can wow people and, and create this sense of awe that religion used to have and, and modern day has, has kind of, we need to re-enchant the world through science is what Thomas Berry said. Yeah. Well, I love that idea. I, I had never really put that together. I guess I live in a hole, but that is the role for universities. That would be a wonderful role for universities. Yeah. Uh, universities, bioregional learning centers, they, they, they could, because then out of that would come bioregional innovation, it, all the conversations around falling in love with the place, like getting, getting the designers and the linguists help the chemists and the physicists do an exhibition in the local museum around how to fall, how physics and chemi chemistry can give us insights about this place and make, make us fall in love with it. Uh, it's juicy stuff. <laughs> I think I need to open up a and b near a university and start that. Uh... <laughs> well, I've got the B&B, &B, but I'm very long way from a university. So, How far are you from a um, substantial well, the, clo town? the closest, uh, well, there's a, uh, I guess Gloucester has a, a sort of a university, but the Birmingham is the main center or Oxford's about, we're almost equidistant from Oxford, which has got plenty of university. Um, yeah. No, I'm, 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 I really follow what you're saying. Um, I, I like it, but I'm also very interested in how you can get that, that, that coming together of, of relatively ordinary people in the sense that they don't need to have the theoretical knowledge. They need to start to, to just open their eyes to what's all around them. I don't know whether... But that, that's what, what the idea is, like the, because the next stage from that one out is um, public libraries, public museums, all forms of culture need to, like I'm, I'm beginning to realize that, that the only way that, like the genie is out of the box, everybody's talking about this anyway. Like if we keep feeding this conversation and we bring it with, with a deeper sense of meaning, always tying it back to the, the, the deeper um, meaning of the world. With, for me, like I, I'd love to actually find both of your responses to this. If I had to summarize the, the biggest, insights of the last year or so in terms of getting crisper on where my languaging has made people misunderstand me repeatedly. Um, the two things that I'm beginning to see is if we don't anchor regeneration in a double anchor in, in the past, we can't use it to build the future. And, and that double anchor for me goes 
a one level into that we as a hu as human beings would not be here if 99% of our ancestry are the, the, the people who came before us would not have been bioregional custodians of the ecosystems they saw themselves as expressions of. And just the fact that what we call human history, the detour of the last five to eight to 10,000 years or whatever you want to call it in different places, doesn't mean that we're not in our very genes, our very uniqueness as a species, a collaborative keystone species that knows how to garden and how to make ecosystems more abundant. Because if we, if we anchor the narrative that deep, I had somebody after I mentioned that in a webinar really make me realize the power of this because she wrote to me afterwards and said, since you said this, realign with life's regenerative impulse, I believe we can do it. When I understood you as talking about the utopia of a regenerative culture that we all needed to create before it all goes to hell in a handbasket, I didn't believe we could do it. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I believe it because I know that it's part of life and all we need to get is out of the way. And that's exactly what it is. Uh -huh. and, 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 and then, so, so, and the other thing is, is anchoring it even deeper because it, what it does with our species is it also anchors us as indigenous to life. And if we don't throw that anchor, we actually, as we give value to the indigenous teachings, we're going to also empower people who will use indigenous versus non-indigenous to separate rather than um, create a healthy dynamic whole. So, so, so by, by naming indigenous to life and making us all part of that lineage and making life itself, like the evolutionist, basically the evolutionary impulse is to be generative and regenerative. It's core of how life functions. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you use it in, in, in your own work, but, but would you agree on, on these double anchors that they're actually really important? What's, what's your reflection? Um, because I think this is super important for some reason. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I call it the double, but everything you said, I absolutely agree with. Mm. So the, the double, the, the one anchor was the fact that we all co-evolved with that place and had that genetic predisposition. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, the double is, is it's kind of our species is at its very essence, regenerative and indigenous to life. And the other thing is that regeneration in and of itself, the fact that life has created conditions conducive to life, that life should be understood primarily as a planetary process and that we kind of get it wrong when we look at it from a speciesist or individualist lens. It's, it's a limit, it's a useful, but it's a limited perspective, half of the story. Well, that's kind of what Ostrom proved, right? With her common pool resource. That's why the, the idea of place, mm -hmm. we will, have, eventually get our act together to take care of places. We may not get our act together to take care of the planet mm -hmm. uh, because the place is real and we can see the ramifications of our, of our uh, lifestyle. Uh, but my, yeah. my experience is when people start to um, really dig more deeply into the nature of, of the place that they're living in, uh, you can't draw a line that says, we're only interested in the present and the future. The past always comes up. I mean, one of the things that's fascinating right now with the, with the interest in regenerative agriculture is that there are still generations of farmers. They're pretty old now, but, you know, farmed a very, very different way in this country. You know, even, you know, 50 years ago, maybe obviously older than that, but the, those guys are probably not alive. But there is this real sense of, of that continuity with the past or a, a return to a much more intimate relationship. So if that's one of your anchors, if I've understood you correctly, um, I think it's absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. And when you go to countries, other countries where the indigenous population is much more, has much greater influence on, on people's mindsets, it's just natural. You know, you always think about your ancestors. You always constantly um, well, look at what's happening in Australia. I mean, you can't start a meeting in Australia without people saying I'm living on unceded land belonging to this particular tribe. I mean, it sounds a bit pretentious in a way, but it's a reminder that there were generations before living and taking care of this land before we came along with our highfalutin ideas. Mm -hmm. 
So I, you know, I think I'm just as basically I'm yes. saying yes, I agree with you. I wouldn't use the same language, but I'm. I'm yeah, I mean, what, what you were saying earlier about tourism when you just mentioned regenerative agriculture, because it's got getting it's one of those another one of those boom areas where the word is being used in or the whole field of regeneration by some people is reduced to re regenerative agriculture and ecological yeah. restoration. Um, so so there's, there's just so many levels to misunderstand, but I think what, what, where, where it's absolutely right is whenever we just talk about regenerative one system, uh, like I, I, last year I've had at least three invitations to different UN food system processes that are oh, yes, really but, and and so many places universities and research centers are all talking about the food system but you can't solve the food system without solving the the water system the agriculture system the energy system the, the it's it's all deeply interwoven land use patterns um climate change um we and then like basically that's why i think the regenerative tourism meme has potential because we talked about this before and i like that the one weird thing about tourism is that it's a strange industry that touches all aspects of life somehow because it's offering people a life away from home so anything from transport food energy housing also like fun joy all of it is somehow touched and there, therefore it's it's a kind of trojan horse to have an integrative conversation if you then add the locality to it the place regional how can tour, tourism serve this region because tourism actually does touch all aspects you can then build a more complex narrative where regeneration doesn't fall into the silo of regenerative agriculture just being about increasing yields while healing the land rather than also being about um an expression of that uniqueness of, of of that landscape so basically farmers as custodians of the beauty of place which is what tourism um, is attracted by you know i think the problem with regenerative tourism is the word tourism well that's what i'm saying i'm sorry yeah. i just love to give I mean, it up it has all that. sorts of negative connotations and what if we called it regenerative sharing or well, we're just even re there's nothing wrong with regenerative development of a place it's it's just um because that could ha there could be all kinds of different ways of revitalizing a place with or without tourism the role that tourism could and should be playing is i always remember that in the, those beautiful films that Katie Teague would, did with you guys, the Regenesis, mm -hmm. where she looks up and says, um, who is this place that called you here? Mm -hmm. A, I was really struck with the who is this place, because that is the communication that it's a living system in and of its own right. Um, and it's calling different people, the people who live there, but also people who, who visit it. And maybe that's the role that tourism should and could be playing which is to say who are you <laughs> um because you you know and how do you uh, in order to flourish as a potential destination that's going back to the tourism jargon you have to be fully alive yourself you have to know yourself you have to you know if you want to throw a party you have to welcome people but that means you have to be yourself you have to yeah, be well who are you and how can i get to know you Get, exactly. So if we were to, to say that's the role that tourism can play, mm -hmm. and then, yes, it's bringing an injection of some uh, uh, new ideas and, and some cash that wouldn't have been there before. But if we can get some of the tourism folks to play that role and say, let's get to know each other really deeply, because the more we, you, we understand your uniqueness and your potential, the more we're able to to bring the kind of visitor that's going to appreciate who you are. I don't know. So that's where tourism becomes the means. But um, I, what you were just talking about is before we got on this call, I, I pulled up a poem that somebody shared with me last Friday that for me, I just want to share it with you because yeah. for me, reading this poem made me understand finally, like it landed deeper. I understood it intellectually, what you were on about and Carol was on about with essence, but essence was always one of the more difficult ones for me to, I found a poetic way of 
describing essence here. Here it is. It's called The Clearing by Martha Postlewaite. Do not try to save the whole world or do anything grandiose. Instead, create a clearing in the dense forest of your life and mm. wait there patiently <laughs> until good. the song that is your life falls into your own cupped hands and you recognize and greet it. Only then will you know how to give yourself to this world so worth of rescue. Yeah. Beautiful. That is beautiful. It's... <laughs> For me, that, that's, so that yeah. comes back to this notion that this has to happen at an individual level, you know, who creating the clearing in our own mess, messy minds and hearts and everything, mm -hmm. but also then coming together in a place and asking the same, you know, the same process, finding the clearing in the middle of this place that is its, its essence. But, but the problem with the tourism people is that they were immediately distorted into another form of branding. See, that, form of what? Branding. Mm. Brand. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, the but more sophisticated method they'll use, and it will still be the same thing. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was an aside. But, but, but what makes it like, I, I, because I think we're all sitting with this uh, in our professional lives. Um, like we know how far the boat needs to be pushed out to really make a different a difference in this personal development and worldview transformation that is so at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. But I think we also know that with many people in the industry that we keep coming back to, it's really hard to really engage lots of people in that. You might find the odd individual, you might find be able to rally a small group of like-minded people and it's it's this the, the theory of change is it is it just focusing on that small kind of friends in the work building that field or is there a role in that other work in order to because now that it is going on and so many conversations are being bastardized to what extent somehow trying to influence even if it is not at depth but almost like I often have this image of a funnel, that there's a kind of conversation at this level of the funnel that, that is still by and large very mistaken and, and, and a very mixed of motivations, but it, it helps people to sink deeper and, and get more and more interested and then eventually find themselves into the kind of conversations we, we would like to have from day one. Um, well, I think it's a combination of the two. I, I don't see it as an either or at all. Um, How about you, Bill? Like, because I think Regenesis is trying the other way around, no? Well, I, I think though, the other way around, I would say that what we are trying to do is build fields. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, don't think it, I don't think it's an either or. I think that, that there are people that are going to be, listen, the whole sustainability movement um, while I think ineffective as in terms of the limiting the damage perspective, the slower way to die, as Bill McDonough says, mm -hmm. um, is, um, is necessary. You have to do it. So it's mm -hmm. not that it's wrong. It's just is not as effective. So what's effective? Well, that's a scaling. So the sustainability movement is, if you will, scaling uh, fear, scaling guilt, scaling efficiency, scaling... Um, mechanical uh, mechanical efficiency. So the effectiveness side is ultimately dependent on developing love and developing will to support that love. And that doesn't happen because we tell somebody or it only happens by doing and um, by being. And that's where I've seen it's, it takes about a year to, to kickstart that even at a little bit in a community. But then I've seen that cascading where nobody wanted to talk to us, you know, saying, can we talk? We, we want to play. And then I think that that is the engine for massive transformation. I saw that happen um, when we were, we were working in Flanders, we started working with, with one, several communities, but one community was particularly keen. And then they got us connected with it's a small rural community in um, in Flanders with another 
they got a leader project. So they ended up working with uh, Angus in Scotland that had no organization at all. And then, um, and then a Romanian village as well. And what's just amazing to watch over, now it's nearly a two or three year period of just all the stuff that is emerging from the ground up in all of those three places. So, um, yeah. Look, so look at this conversation. Look, I mean, look, look at, I don't know about you guys, but I've seen massive, nobody was talking about this five years ago. Oh no, the change is phenomenal. So, so there's something There's something going on. Yeah. There is, there's no doubt about it. And I think, um, so that's why I say it's a bit of both. I think, I feel that there is a need right now to, uh, to I feel personally, and it, since I seem to be associated with one of the early protagonists of, um, uh, regen of applying regenerative thinking to tourism, uh, there are many others, but um, I get quoted all the time. But, I, but what I find fascinating is that I'm quoted and my words are used, but no one ever, no one ever writes to me. No one ever, me, no one ever has a conversation with me. I mean, it's like I'm the must be the most um, difficult person to get a hold of. I don't know what it is, but it's just fascinating. I find that actually very depressing because I put this stuff out there to get conversation. But people just see it as something to to uh, to use. Um, well, I'm, I put but I'm not unhappy about there. that because it's it's, it's yeah, but, I mean, it, it, Imagine like the amount of stuff that I've put out there, and how many? Um, how many people have contacted well, you? Daniel? I mean, yeah. Well, I do get. The, get careful, be careful what you ask for. I, yeah, I, be careful. I, I find it sometimes quite difficult to deal with the amount of um, requests yeah, or contacts enough. I get, but but. Um, it is success to to have ideas travel um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. for other people to use it. Um, but that was the idea. But, but anyway, I wasn't meaning it to sound. I was complaining, but I just there isn't much opportunity. No, but, but what I'm but I'm wondering is isn't like because you've said this for a long time that writing your book and writing your reflections on tourism would really be a process of of putting something out there that that people. Could engage with and and even the the um, a follow up on the stimulation that the event and the process of um, travel to tomorrow visit Flanders or that that, that you helped curate mm -hmm. and what you helped curate in New Zealand and what you helped curate in I don't know were you also in Ireland on on some something and and now in Mexico um, like we. Even naming all the shortcomings of it all would already deepen the conversation in, in the field. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I'm not, as I say, I didn't want that to come across as a complaint. It was just, I, I'm also at that point of, you, you asked the question, is it is it moving things at this macro level in a sense of ideas or is it is it focusing on the on specific projects at the community? And I think it is a bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I really enjoyed about the time I had in Mexico was the opportunity to get out there and talk to people that were actually um, doing it, you know, mm -hmm. and and giving them ideas but connecting them. So no, I'm I'm as to the book, um, the biggest challenge I have, you know, we're talking now about the practicalities of life, is that uh, uh, you know a book take. I've started right. the book at various times and got stuck but um i just you know i've still got to make a living so and mm -hmm. the tourism folks are not very keen on paying they're very happy no they they, they are they that's well that's, maybe i think i think i'm not a very good salesperson i've come to the conclusion i mean when <laughs> bill is our agent I've, I've had a conversation off record with bill earlier and if i i should just say don't talk to me about money just Send an email to Bill and Bill can have twenty five percent, and I'll, I'll negotiate. Sure, we'll I'll still be much it. better off. Well, I think you're the, <laughs> the most commercially savvy guy in the room tonight. That's for yeah, sure. and that's and that's still not very. <laughs> 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 I wish I really was commercially savvy, but um, oh, anyway, uh, but but I think, did you but, hear my joke that uh, John Hawkins has but, made uh, sales? <laughs> you are such an excellent writer that uh, I think if you assemble your writings into a into a collection. Yeah, I've, I've, I've oh, put it all oh, there. Time. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. it's all there. Um, it's just putting it together. I'm just right now, what what my immediate, um, I have committed myself to 
uh, launching the regenerativetourism.com resource site uh, because at least then it's out there and we can grow it, we can add to it. And so I will be communicating with you about that. But I feel I have to do something to say I'm still alive and I'm producing and I'm writing and I'm thinking and, and hopefully this is helpful as a yeah. way of getting back to some of the core principles of what regeneration is and isn't. But and and you, I, w- I would love for both. Of, but you also somehow involved in John Fullerton's new learning journey that is starting this week. I'm, yeah, I'm very wrong. Starting it with with a group of people from tourism, aren't you? Yeah, I went out and I, I, I we got to. As I said, John wrote to me and said, "I'm going to make you are head of sales." He has more <laughs> tourism people on his course now, <laughs> and it starts next week. Then, because I went out there and I thought, "Okay, let's see if we can get a group together and 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 learn together." So we've got some nice people. I'll, I'll let you know who's on it. So yeah, yeah I'm, that's and a, I just needed a, I need to that's interest. that's a perfect intervention of bringing a cohort <laughs> together to even if it is somebody else's course okay. to as a group in yeah. that course begin to build a field um, yep. and then you can do a TLP with with that group the next time around yeah, yeah that, that, pitching, yeah. pitching builds <laughs> yeah well John John is a, that's a good John is a good example of what happens when a field gets built right yeah. mm-hmm. the people that have signed up I guess he's got a thousand people signed up for the course is he really yeah wow I'm pretty sure and I'm head of sales <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you, I would have, you know where I made a mistake was I didn't do a deal with him beforehand and say I'll take ten percent. <laughs> uh, I think I think he would be amenable to that. So we well, anyway, talk. maybe he'll do it retroactively if I can't afford to pay the installments. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, not to worry. No, I think it's good, and I'm I I just feel now for me a lot of it is just um, the last year was tough, and it's it was just confidence getting my confidence back. I don't know what happened, but. Um, yeah, just watching all of these consultants jump on the bandwagon was just pretty disappointing. But yeah. I'm over it. Yeah. I'm you, over it now. Don't worry. Can you imagine how I, how I felt when there's a local political east of a professor at the university? He's, he's, he's a real mover and shaker, and he used to run a the the institute for economic research for the Balearic Islands and would give a state of the union address one, once a year about how the economy was doing and everybody of, of any kind of importance in the Balearics was at this event. And then the, the, the bank that bankrolled this little institute collapsed. And so for a moment, he didn't find his next outfit, but it took him about two years to set up Impulsa Balear, which is, is like a promoting innovation and, and business development in the Balearic Islands, now funded not by a bank, but by the tourism industry, safer for him. Um, and these guys published last year, I kid you not, a 26-page document that was entitled to the subtitle, and the whole branding was about Ray Balear, and the subtitle was Towards a Regenerative Movement in the Balearic Islands. And if we've just been talking about that some people are very far off the mark when they talk about it, then maybe that's one of the extreme cases. <laughs> and the guy knows me and he's got a copy of my book and we like each other. And next next week or week after next, we're actually going to meet again after seven years of not talking. But the, the, the very fact that I can be on this island and they can publish something like that and not in, at least invite me for a cup of coffee to have, have a chat about it. Yeah. I figured you'd have a worse story than me. <laughs> so, so I feel for you, but uh, that's okay. I'm over it now. I just, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I went and wept on your shoulders the other day, but uh, oh, we're all, we all have that. We have our ups and downs. But what, and one thing I can say that this is the most intellectually stimulating and enjoyable conversation in tourism I've had in years. So <laughs> can we do it more often? Yeah, let's do it more. Um, Bill, I, I just, before we go, I, I wanted to ask you, because one thing that happened to me recently was that I was invited to give a talk at the Congreso Futuro in Chile, which is run by the government once a year about interesting things that oh. the, the, their political class should be kept up to date with. So they run a little event and then they make it easy, digestible for their um, elected officials to get access to this. Oh, so, I was, so I was interviewed as if regeneration, the best the, the new thing on the block, supposedly. I was interviewed 
by the Library of Congress of the no, yeah, the Library of Congress of Chile. And I said, like, look, you, you've got wonderful examples in Chile, and one of them is actually Regenesis uh, Group working not far from Santiago de Chile. It, what what has happened with with that? Ah, that's a really good. That's a good question, and um, oh. and I was actually. Uh, so good things, but you wouldn't, you would not know it. And I've actually, the CEO of COPEC called me up about a month and a half ago. And I hadn't talked to him in four years. I said, oh, what's that about? And uh, he just wanted to tap in and tell me what was going on. But I talked to the manager and they have built. So maybe this is a longer answer than you want, but it's useful. No. And I'm gonna give you a little foreshadowing. I got a call from one of the TRP students from Chile. Mm -hmm. I said, Bill, I hear you talking about Vina del Mar, and I live in Vina del Mar, and uh, this came out in the first. Anyway, this came out in the paper. This very negative thing about the development. And he said, Well, what's is this regeneration? I said, well, yeah, you got to know the whole story. Mm -hmm. So, the um, and I don't want well, don't want to take too much of your time, but we developed that field. And we got people within a, 10 months, we had professors, and there are 11 universities in this area, Vina del Mar and Valparaiso, mm -hmm. saying, you know, what are you two gringos doing here? We should be running this meeting, which is, of course, exactly what we wanted. And, uh, <laughs> off, to, <laughs> off to the races, um, the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce uh, gave four million bucks to restore the estuary. He didn't want to talk to us initially, but the field got built. He, he's the guy, and I quote him all the time, he called up our client and said, Ricardo, I don't know what you guys are doing, but count us in. This is the first time the city's been able to dream in 30 years. Oh, no, that's and that happened because of the field. Oh, that's all. The mayor did not want to talk to us. In fact, she commanded her sustainability staff and planning staff not to talk to us. Not do not talk to do not meet with Regenesis. And well, she was in a power play. Two years later. After we left, she called up and said, all right, I get it. This is good stuff. I want to play. So this is that's the example of field building. Mm -hmm. Now, the project is a 25-year project, and mostly because the brownfield, it was an oil tank farm, 19 hectares of oil tank farm that was owned by COPEC, um, had petroleum pollution primarily, which is pretty easily remediated. However, for whatever reason, the Chileans were terrified of the aromatic hydrocarbons, the volatile hydrocarbons that would come out as a result of the re re remediation process. And this was the nodal intervention, if you will, in this project. So we almost had to put the town to the side and the relationships that got developed and focus on an assemblage of professors from the universities to function as the expert advisors, because they were not going to believe anybody from out of country, right? So that was a year of integration and hurting. And you know what? It, you know how hard it is to get professors to work together. <laughs> so, so that took literally a year of building a coalition of professors. And eventually, they really they loved each other after all multiple fights and multiple bringing them back together they recommended an approval process on bioremediation based on one of the professor's work at uh, the Catholic University <laughs> um, to take care of the site. And it, for the first time in Chilean history, they actually got through the federal, they developed federal requirements and they, were, they got approved for the brownfield. So that was a major victory. That happened last June. That took that long, but Got it. Now, that doesn't mean, but since they abandoned really engaging the community as deeply as they should, there were a whole bunch of other people popping up and saying they were still terrified of the brownfield. So now it's going back and forth with, even though, even though it's moving ahead, the, what, what the, what the um, CEO told me is that they're just going to let it sit for a while now until people realize when they catch the, the, the like the dog that cut, catches the car, what do you do with it once you get it, right? And so the people are going to catch, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we stop this project. Now, what do you want instead? So it's flipped. The CEO is, is doing a pretty cool thing. 
he's flipping it from uh, fighting it to saying, great, whatever you want. And there's no real positive answer because they can't take care of parks. There's a lot of issues here, but basically it's, um, it's proceeding with a being state that I think is actually going to do pretty miraculous things for that, for that town. So that's a long convoluted answer, but it's a very complex situation. But the groundwork was set. And the fact that I got a call, this is the CEO that basically said, Bill, you, you're never in control. This is the same CEO um, who called me up and said, we wanted your perspective to see how we're doing. So they're, they're moving. No, also be, it might be it's a subtle. It's a subtle story, but it's. I think it. I think it's working. Lovely. It's a lovely story, and and I also because I, like I, when they were interviewing me, I, I told them about the nascent network of people in Chile working on regenerative things like Roland Sistek and 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 so on. There's there's a number of of people working in in yeah. the field, uh -huh. but but having examples on their doorstep like like this one um who knows maybe, maybe you'll get a get a call because it's it's, uh, beginning, it's beginning to be a big conversation in chile particularly in in the regional governments yeah and I, you know daniel if you are you invite i could give you i could set you up with some leadership in the in the country and to get yeah. you to speak over there if that's what no i i don't want to travel just like you I, I, okay well even <laughs> zoom but anyway i could i could run some interference for you yeah. if you were um, but here's the here's the issue. Show me a regenerative project. Mm -hmm. That's like saying, show me love, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and yes, you can see manifestations of love, which is what which is basically the story that I just told you is manifestations of love. But I can't show you a project yet. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's that's. It's, a, the it's, other, a, network, the it's a network of relationship rather than a project. Um, right. Like, what, and that's subtle. Like, that's that's where emergence happens from, and then people get obsessed with the object, the the, the product, the outcome, the deliverable. But but it's actually the the network of relationships that builds capacity to do things in the future. We don't know what they're going to be. But to do things that are meaningful, that respond, that that help to revitalize. That's, I think, where we're at right now with getting this regenerative um, ideas forward. It's it's dematerializing. You know, yeah. it, because regeneration is a process. Obviously, I mean, that's you know, obviously saying the obvious to you guys, but most people don't realize it. They think of it as a thing. Right. You you put the adjective in front of the noun, and now you have a thing called regenerative tourism. There's no such thing as regenerative tourism. Yeah, but but, but be, because what Bill was saying is that all this kind of um, dying more slowly is also important. And if we're going to get people bastardizing the term anyway, then why not? Like for Christ's sake, let let them have a conversation about regenerative systems and designing regenerative and resilient systems. Of course, I can move to a different level and critique the very n title of the masters I helped to create. But I still think it's a useful beginning of a conversation, and I will be able to have that deeper conversation with somebody precisely because that master exists, and it will be the, the, the minds that shape yeah. part of what's coming in the future, the, the next generation. Um, so That's it's right. Good. I know what you you're know, saying. I think I know what you're saying. I mean, if it wasn't such a thing as regenerative tourism out there, we wouldn't have, be able to have all these conversations. Right. And, but and it's still and so getting, a, you talk about a field, and a field is a very nebulous idea. It's a, yeah, but, um, but that's, that's why I think we need to. Love. It's there or it's not there. But, you but know. like, I, I believe that with your background uh, in destination work, to begin a bioregional development, the regenerative development conversation or bioregional regeneration conversation, economic regeneration conversation with people in tourism heavy regions and say, of course, tourism is an entry point, but as, as you so passionately brought up a number of times, this call that let's get away from this tourism term. Let's make it a bigger conversation. Let's make it a conversation about a bioregional economy that, that can get heavy, well, hit, heavily hit if tourism stops. And then let's make it an integrated sustainability conversation as well, because that's not bad stuff just because there is no, I, a way I, to go I, deeper. So you can talk about 
local renewable energy, decentralized, um, cooperatively owned, the same with zero kilometer um, food for the tourism business. Um, tourism businesses drawing, like building the capacity for local water treatment, local energy production, local food production, um, building the capacity for an open public renewables based electric transport system, all of that, they actually willing to listen to. And let, let me and offer the word. Oh, sorry, Anna, go ahead. No, go ahead. Let me offer the word that has always allowed me access to practice this way, even when I don't have permission. Mm -hmm. And that is integration. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we get often get invited to do, because I wrote a book on integrative systems thinking, so I get invited to do integrative. So I say, well, and they also, they know that we're involved with regeneration and maybe regeneration. And I never get permission to do regeneration, but I get permission to do integration. But I don't tell them I'm doing regeneration while I'm doing integration. Mm. And it works. Yeah. So, you know, we call it Fred. I don't care what we call it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we should do more Fred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I think this was, this was be our code word for integration. Yeah. <laughs> but this was wonderful to, to reconnect. And I, I just. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Of course, in my in my dr dream world, I want you all to come to Mallorca because I don't like traveling, but I would love to spend time with you in person. But but we could dream something like that up at some point, and and I'm I'm, I'm cooking on that, like because that's what you were getting to in the beginning. Like, um, of course, it while it's it's not going to change anything, but it could change everything to have a very in-depth conversation with some key influences around the island and some key influences who reflect on re regeneration and economic revitalization at a bioregional scale and to do so in in a setting where it's simply just percolating and sharing ideas and 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 keeping it keeping space for positive emergence but having somebody of course, bankroll the whole process, so 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 we can have a relaxed time for um, five or six days to to do that. That's my plan. <laughs> to find I'll have to speak to Mr. Fullerton. <laughs> that would be lovely, actually. Yeah, I yeah, think John just, would be a great place. We should, we should go camp out of John's house, John's new house in Stonington. Mm. Please. Have you been there? I haven't. I haven't been there yet. I've never met him. So, but where has he built a new house? In Stonington, Connecticut. In Connecticut, oh, that's a beautiful spot. If he had Ben and Tim help him with the site selection years ago. Okay. So that was kind of. And he, and he still talks about the fractal that keeps popping up that because it's the, the way his house is on a kind of end of a land tongue. Like it's, somehow he sees, like I, I've, I've looked at it on the map. It's a, it's a, it's a fractal within a fractal within a fractal. Ah, okay. Wow, you've done more than I have. I, I'm curious. <laughs> I threatened to John that I would have to drive down and see him. He's only a couple hours away, so mm, mm. do that. Great. All right, guys. Thank you very much, guys, for a really and inspiring th evening. Th thank you. I really enjoyed it. And I, I think it's so exciting that you're doing John's course. I actually want to dip in on it as well a couple of times um, as much as I can. But but I'd, I'd well, love it to... It opened with you today. The... Yeah, it, yeah, it opened to... I uh, saw the invite in, uh, today. The, it, it's just, I think that even the... The reflective journey of you as a group using that input and mm. making it reflect through tourism you could all like why, why don't you write with the people that you're doing this journey with mm. a little diary and yeah, then share, exactly. that, uh, share yeah. the diary on medium because we all would love to hear what you're reflecting on and, yeah. and, yeah. and then we've already got the beginning of the book <laughs> well done all right okay. yeah i take That's up the challenge <laughs> Let's Thank make you. it happen that we will hug each other in, in person, not well, just in 2D. Not just this way. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Bill. Thank you, Bill. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. Bye, all. Thanks.